Okay, Prof. Uh, uh, sudah ada almost 20 participant. So, I think we can get start. Lah. Sure. Alright. Okay. Assalamualaikum dan selamat pagi diucapkan kepada tuan-tuan, puan-puan dan adik-adik semua yang sedang menonton secara langsung eh, dalam platform uh, Zoom iaitu dalam program uh, virtual PSN Sign Fest tahun 2021. Okey, untuk slot yang menarik kali ini ya eh, yang sesi yang ditunggu-tunggu oleh adik-adik semua uh, iaitu uh, Science Chat bersama uh, bertajuk Shaping Our Future with Sign uh, iaitu Sembang Sains yang bersama individu yang ternama iaitu yang special, yang istimewa, insan yang istimewa yang bersama Prof. Dr. Abimayu Virakumarasivam iaitu pensyarah dan juga dekan di Sunway University yang juga pernah berjaya memenangi juara dan tempat pertama dalam pertandingan FamLab International Competition 2016. Okey, untuk pagi ini tanpa kita nak melengahkan masa, kita jemput Profesor Dr. Abimanyu untuk menyampaikan sesi perkongsian beliau mengenai tajuk Shaping Our Future with Science. Dipersilakan, Prof. Alright, terima kasih. Selamat pagi, uh, MC, yeah, for the very kind introduction. Selamat pagi, adik-adik, I mean, ibu bapa, serta I think cikgu yang ada hari ini. I mean, ini terima kasih kerana meluangkan masa uh, pada ahad yang uh, awal ni you know, untuk uh, bersama dengan saya. Uh, we will try and keep this as secara informal. Um, so, jika ada apa-apa soalan, you know, do not hesitate to, um, you know, just raise your hands or just switch on your uh, audio ataupun chat, um, ada chat function, you boleh typekan soalan tersebut. Because this, this group of individuals are very, very heterogeneous. So, maksudnya, you know, I'm trying to pitch today uh, to a broad audience. So, jangan teragak-agak untuk bertanyakan soalan. Eh? Alright, so let me share screen. All right, is it full screen now? MC, can you can you see my full screen? Yes, yes, probably. All right, great. All right, so um, let's start with um, you know just reiterating what the topic is today, and it's about how can we uh, shape our future with science, ah, huh? menentukan masa depan uh, ataupun membentuk masa depan yang kita ingini. Uh, dengan science, technology, uh, inovasi. So I always talk about, you know, I think in today's world, uh, I mean, you know, setiap orang ada keinginan and, you know, always we want to say what I want. And I think in today's world where everything, you know, we want it, I want now, you know, or I want what I want now, yesterday. Uh, and, and I think uh, memang, you know, there's, there's this desire to achieve what you want. But, um, you know, a lot of times, you know, we are sitting and we're like, I don't even know what I want. I mean, you know, and, and, and nobody understands what I want. I mean, how many of you feel like that? I mean, I still feel like that. Um, and, and I think, you know, today I, I, I actually pity you. When I was a student, um, masa tu tak internet. I mean, in fact, you know, when in 1997, when I did my SPM, you know, there was no such thing as, you know, internet at least, you know, secara berleluasa. And, and certainly, you know, for those of you who are old like me, you'll know about the modem, the 256 modem that sounds and then after that, you know, it you never have access to all this information. And in fact, I think the first time I used the internet was in 1999. And this was when, just before I went to university. The problem with the internet, you know, is obviously you have too many options. Dan juga you membandingkan diri anda dengan seluruh dunia. For me, it was easy untuk jadi jago kwan, you know, kampung. Because when I was in Kuantan, I only compare myself with my friends around me. But today, all of you are comparing with everybody around the world. And kadangkala kita nampak apa yang ada di screen, you know, sebenarnya taklah, you know, the real story. I mean, there are so many things there and you sometimes feel so frustrated, right? 
and many of you, oh, I want to become this, I want to go that, you know, and it becomes very difficult. And then you were like, ah, I just want to punch the screen, right? Because the internet is supposed to tell me what I want. Yet, you know, unfortunately, you know, I, I'm more confused after reviewing all these options that I have. But I, I just want to, you know, say that sometimes, Bila, you know, you listen to people like me and, you know, thank you to Pusat Science Negara for kindly inviting me and giving me this uh, kind introduction. Tapi, uh, hakikatnya, I mean, I was also a child like all of you. Um, you know, I, I, I come from a, in a small little taman in Kuantan. Uh, these are my parents. I mean, you know, both my parents, my father worked in telecoms. My mother was a housewife. And, um, you know, essentially, my story is just like every normal middle class Malaysian, you know, out there. And I just want to say that sometimes bila kita terlalu mengangkat-angkatkan orang yang, you know, that, that you think has capai, you forget that actually all of us went through perjalanan yang sama. And all of us, you know, will have our own opportunities uh, to make the impact that we actually want. So in my case, uh, as I mentioned, I grew up in Kuantan. So sekolah pertama ialah sekolah rendah kebangsaan teruntum. Uh, dan selepas UPSR, I went to sekolah menengah Sultan Abu Bakar. And di sana, I did my Form 1 right up to my Form 6. Uh, and you can see even at school, you know, saya telah melibatkan diri dalam pelbagai aktiviti lah. Contohnya dekat Kelab Berkat Cipta. Uh, and you know, that's me down there. The last time I did some exercise, I think was in Form 3. So when you talk about what I want, I think today I want to challenge, you know, anak-anak semua to actually ask the question, apakah dunia perlukan? Eh? What does the world need? Because kadang-kadang kita terlalu tertaksub dengan keinginan diri sendiri, kita lupa apakah yang betul-betul diperlukan. And I find jika kita boleh memuaskan keperluan orang lain, you will find that anda akan diperlukan lebih lagi dan with that you akan dapat apa saja yang you inginkan and so i want you to think about it in a way that instead of focusing on what i want focus on what the world needs because if you can answer what the world needs it just means that you have the answers you have the solutions and this ultimately makes you relevant and therefore you get what you want and, you know, when you think about what the world needs today, we, you know, the COP26 meeting is just about ending in Glasgow, right? And you've probably heard about all these grand challenges, the melting ice and its consequences, the circulation and climate is becoming more and more sensitive. Then you have all these regional sea levels and the coastal impact. You talk about food insufficiency, kekurangan makanan, right? Ataupun security makanan. And then all this weather and climate extremes. You know, when I was uh, in school, kita belajar geography, that masa sekarang, you know, monsoon, timur laut, right? And you actually only happens in the East Coast, dekat pantai timur, right? But today, I live in KL and I feel like this is the same monsoon that, you know, now I'm having every day in, in KL. And so the world that we are living in is changing very dramatically. There's so many challenges. In fact, I always tell people, you don't have to go so far about asking what is the question that needs to be answered? What is my purpose? What is my role? The United Nations you know, telah mengeluarkan 17 sustainable development goals. Huh? And you can see, daripada mengurangkan poverty to zero hunger, to good health and well-being, to quality education, to gender equality, to clean water, energy, decent work and economic growth, industry and innovation, reduce inequality, sustainable cities and communities, responsible consumption and production, climate action, life below water, life on land, and of course, peace and justice. And finally, that Kerja Sama goals, right? Partnerships, because we know that we don't live in isolation. Of course, kita nak memartabatkan negara and memartabatkan bangsa dan you know, agama dan sebagainya. But the you know, tagline yang kita dah dengar banyak eh, because of COVID-19 ialah we are not safe until everybody is safe. That 
you know manusia sejagat perlulah di protect eh? and everybody is equal and in fact it's not just the manusia it's the haiwan it's the plants everyone needs to be protected because we live in an ecosystem that's that's really there so when you talk about you know if those of you anak anak semua if you're asking apa saya nak buat ni ya eh? I think you should really use this opportunity to look at all these different issues and tanya diri sendiri. Tepuk dada, tanya selera. Mana yang paling menyelerakan? <laughs> all right, if you have not had sarapan pagi. You know, what is the you know, real thing that you really want to capai? Look at, you know, Greta Thunberg, right? I mean, you probably have heard of her. Look at, you know, she's a teenager and she's making that big impact in making us realize that kadangkala bila isu terlalu dipolitikkan, kita lupa apakah yang kita sebenarnya nak capai. And that is why, you know, you are our masa depan. But I actually say you are also a masa sekarang. You're already living in this earth and it's really important that you uh, think about how to do this. And sometimes, you know, memanglah dekat kedai kopi, memang senang untuk cakap tentang problem lah. It's easy to, you know, discuss about problems. But what I hope and I think I want to get out of today is basically why science is the solution. Because in science, we mengenal pasti a problem, but we don't stop there. Kita kenal pastikan sesuatu problem hanya kerana kita nak mencari penyelesaian untuk masalah tersebut. Dan yang memerlukan, of course, pengolahan you know, pelbagai you know, fungsi otak serta you know, menggunakan kita punya tangan dan 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 kaki dan mulut dan segala anggota badan untuk melaksanakan eksperimen-eksperimen dan akhirnya you know, kita dapat merumuskan uh, apa yang kita dapat mencapai ataupun inovasi yang you know, dikecapi. And that's solutions. And I want the next Malaysian generation and anak-anak semula, semua yang you know, sedang dengar hari ini you know, realize that actually kita ada ramai pakar untuk memberitahu apa saja problem yang ada di dunia ini. Tapi jurang yang kita ada di masyarakat ini ialah pakar untuk mencari penyelesaian untuk masalah-masalah tersebut. And you know, you don't have to worry. If you can find solutions, you will always be in demand. All right, let's let's play a little game and I want everybody who's here you know, to um, uh, uh, tell me who they are. And I'm going to give you some vouchers, all right? I'm not going to promise you how much, but depending on your answers, uh, Uru Setia, if you can actually get them, get their name and their address or whatever it is, and I will pass you some vouchers and you can email it to them. All right, so anybody can guess who this person is? No, she's not my grandmother. Bukan nenek saya. You can type in the chat. Ah, Samsas. Hi, hi, Nurul Haizun. Oh, you went to Samsas. All right. Okay, I was in SABS, very nearby. Samsas was always very good. I was also in debates at Sharahan and whatever it is, and they used to send very, very good uh, teams. <laughs> hi, Elena. Hi, Nozila Wati. You guys are very, very kind. <laughs> All right, very good, Elena. She is a scientist. Good guess. Of course, she's a scientist. I'm giving a science talk. <laughs> but that's good. You at least are very good at deducing it. So she is Professor Ada Yonath. And Professor Ada Yonath, together with Professor Venki Ramakrishnan, won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2009 for her work in crystallography, where she actually uh, identified the structure and that helped us to understand how this particular organelle in our cells function. All right, what is this organelle called? I know it looks like a little katam or alien, but it's actually something in all our cells in our body. What, what is this? Who wants to guess? Tada ora nak voucher ke? You're trying to save me money, huh? Who wants to guess? MC. I pun, I pun tak sure lah, bro. I pun first time tengok. Name me an organelle. Name me an organelle in the cell. Ini semua tak buat bio lah. You must be a physicist or a chemist. 
<laughs> DNA? Oh, it's not yeah, DNA. No, yeah. Well, you know, not too wrong. I mean, the red color is the mRNA. The purple color is the protein. So this is the organelle that actually makes proteins. It translates to mRNA. Yay! Who was that? Elena, Great. Elena. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good, Elena. No, no, Zilawati, it's not the brain. But in the brain cells, in your neurons, you will have these uh, proteins. And these proteins are the ones that help to, uh, sorry, these ribosomes. And these ribosomes are the ones that make the proteins like dopamine and all the different uh, neurotransmitters. Right, so um, very good, that's the ribosome. Okay, Elena, very good. All right, okay, no, no vouchers for who, guessing of who this is, but who is this? Kardashian. Ah, see, very fast. You all know who Kardashians are. Okay, very good. They are not scientists, by the way. <laughs> they are influencers. All right, who is this? Isaac Newton. Very good. Wow. Who is this? Uh, Elena again. Uh? Yes. All right, great. All right, so I see. And she did not even need the apple as a hint. Very good, very good. Who is this? Not Ada Yonat's grandfather. Uh, this Look not, at what he's holding. Not Leonardo da Vinci, right? Not <laughs> no, not Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci has got crazier hair. Uh, but okay, you know, around the same time, same Benua yang sama juga. Starts with G. Not George Clooney. Oh, okay. Some people have chatted. Let me see what they have. That's right. So Galileo, Galilei. Very good. Nor Amanina, you're the winner. Okay. Very good. So he, you know, helped to get us to understand, you know, at that time we thought the earth was in the middle of the universe, the center of the universe. And of course, you know, he, he basically, through his observation, decided that um, and, and postulated that, you know, the sun or the heliocentric model of the universe. All right, who is this? The, the, the hint is in the screen. And it's not a young Bill Gates. This is the guy that invented the World Wide Web which today we know as the internet. His name is Sir Tim Berners-Lee. So again, a scientist that identified this. All right, now, who is this? This is someone that I think we can all maybe relate to, looks like one of us. Let's try and give you some hints. What, what, what organ is it that he's actually touching? Hard, very good, but you don't get voucher for that. You have to name his name. All right, he used to be at the Institute Jantong Negara. And I think he's still affiliated with it. All right. This is Tan Sri Dato Dr. Yahya Awang. Eh? And he's a pioneer uh, dalam pembedahan jantung and also all the different skills and techniques that he has created that has merevolusasi. Uh, you know, our, our way of uh, understanding how patients can actually recover fast and as well as new techniques uh, to improve the, the, the mortality or, or at least the, the, the survival rates of uh, heart diseases. All right, who is this? And it's not Uji Kaji Kenceng, but it's something else. What yellow fluid do you think that is? All right, let's Agustin, guess. Agustin Ong. Wow, very good. Wow, okay, la, we have a teacher's favorite here, Elena, top student. So this is academician, Tansri Emeritus, Professor Dr. Dr. Augustin Ong Sun Ho, wow. who, as you can see here, it, you know, this, this is what you call, what, what, what plant is this? What do you think? It's Kalapa Sawit. And he was very, very integral together with a lot of researchers in Malaysia, in MPOB, or we used to know as PORIM and the different universities. 
to show that the minyak yang you keluarkan daripada uh, kelapa sawit, minyak sawit is safe, uh, it's also healthy and you know comparable to all the others. And we know that it's because of this work uh, and the work by MPOB that makes you know kelapa sawit such a big uh, contributor to our GDP and economy negara. All right, and who is this? This is my favorite scientist in Malaysia. Prof. Khadija. That's right. So Prof. Khadija Yusof. So Prof. Khadija Yusof is very famous because of her work in understanding various different viruses. But the work that she uh, is, is obviously known for is her work against uh, Newcastle disease virus, virus yang memang sangat sangat teruk uh, for uh, poultry industry yang menyebabkan kerugian berjuta-juta ringgit disebabkan oleh virus ini. But um, basically together with you know various different colleagues including Professor Aini Idris, Professor Abdul Rahman Omar in UPM, they developed a vaccine to actually uh, protect the chickens against this Newcastle disease virus. And then she also found that this Newcastle disease virus can target cancer cells. And I'm working with her to try and identify new ways to target. So you can see this machi, you know, you can see her if she's walking in the streets, you probably think, hey, ni machi mana ni? But you can see, you know, this machi is a brilliant woman, you know, and has achieved, you know, so many amazing impact kepada masyarakat dan juga industri. So the reason why I showed this is that you nampak tak? Nama pertama yang you know paling cepat kita kenali was siapa? Kardashians. Alright, tapi bila kita tanya diri sendiri, I mean, apakah impact Kardashian ke, 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 ke kehidupan kita? I mean, I think of course selain daripada hiburan, you know, uh, dan mungkin tip-tip uh, kecantikan yang mungkin Cik Elena guna, uh, you know, um, but the reality is, you know, the impact kepada kehidupan diri sendiri. I mean, you know, when you talk about quality hidup, you know, uh, kesihatan, kesejahteraan, whatever it is, you can see our own Malaysian scientists telah, meng, you know, mengecap ini. But sometimes because we don't have this in the books yet, you know, we feel like, you know, they haven't. What I want anak-anak semua is actually, kalau kita lihat, Prof. Datin Paduka Katija comes from a little, you know, town in Penang, and her story is just like all of us. Uh, and you know, just melalui kecekalan, and of course, mengambil opportunity when there is, you know, she has actually achieved uh, such great achievements. And I want all of you to realize that you know, our anak-anak Malaysia juga boleh membanggakan bukan saja diri dan keluarga, tetapi negara uh, di pesada dunia. And I hope all of you, you know, can can do that. So. I haven't achieved, you know, as, as what, you know, Prof. Katija has, but I, I am still in the journey and a bit younger too. So just like, um, you know, some of you, uh, I did my, uh, after my STPM, right? So any, if you're matriculasi, then I went to UPM to do my first degree in biomedicine. And then I did my PhD uh, in oncology, the University of Cambridge. And of course, you know, throughout my studies, you know, it's not only about studying. That's the nice thing about education. Education is not about just mendapat sijil, but you discover yourselves, you build your networks. I mean, you know, you 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 party, all right. Uh, but you know, it's always about mencari keseimbangan and under identifying what are the things that actually works for you and not. So you know, I was just joking that I stopped exercising when I was 15. As you can see, I used to do dancing, I used to row, and even very early in the morning, you can see, or even masa musim salji or so, I used to row while um, at, at uh, Cambridge. So it was fun. And today, you know, these are my children, all right? And you can see, so my mother is very strict. Every day they have, my children, have, five years old and three years old have to sit and do homework. <laughs> and I always say that, you know, it's because of that, um, you know, education, uh, I'm, I, I've managed to be where I am. And I think all of you also have to be bersyukurlah to your guru and to your parents because, you know, without their support, uh, you know, you wouldn't be where you are now in your journey and hopefully uh, further forward in the future. Uh, and for me, you know, I, my hasrat for my children is that they also get the opportunities. It doesn't matter what you do later in life, but I want to make sure that they are able to express themselves, but also get exposed to all the different components uh, which make up you know, this beautiful world um, that we are in. 
So over time, you know, I've been able to develop my, my work. A lot of times people think that scientists just sit in the lab and, and basically don't talk to the world. So orang yang tak suka manusia jadilah scientist. But that's not true. Actually, scientists are the ones yang sangat suka manusia kerana mereka sedang menyelesaikan masalah yang dihadapi oleh manusia. And so the reality is, you know, the work that I do, I find really exciting. Setiap hari as a scientist is a different day altogether because we do research, we also teach, we also are involved in all kinds of service. In terms of my own research, I try to understand kenapakah cancer cells bercambah dengan lebih cepat daripada normal cells. That is why the cancer cells menjadi macam tumor kan. Selain daripada itu, I also try to ask kenapakah setengah cancer you know, boleh menindas cell immune kita dan does, you know, basically evade the, the, the different type of therapies than resist therapy. Yeah? Kenapa ada rintangan against uh, pelbagai jenis uh, rawatan. And we have found out that ini disebabkan oleh molecule DNA yang telah mendapat mutasi. Just like how COVID-19 virus yang mutasi jadi strain yang lain, cancer cell juga boleh bermutasi dengan lebih cepat. And so this is the work that my researchers, you know, work with me to try and find new ways that we can actually look at the DNA of someone and actually improve the diagnosis. And I'll talk about this in, in a while. But what I love about my job is that, you know, we, and for example, at Sunway, where I'm the dean, I'm also involved in teaching and communication. And that is why whenever Pusat Science Negara invites me, I always say yes, kerana kelestarian, you know, budaya science di Malaysia, dan juga kelestarian, you know, in, at every different level in, in Malaysia is really reliant on ability for masyarakat to really embrace science and to be engaged in science. And, and that is why, you know, I'm always very, very happy to be out there to promote science and to train the next generation of scientists while having fun. And so these are just some of the pictures that I've been involved in. You know, I've traveled around the world, around the country, um, you know, working on various different projects to try and improve science and communicacy science. And why do I do that? Because first of all, I mean, so that's, this is the latest uh, uh, article that you can go and find in nature. You can just Google. Um, you'll find that even in science, I mean, it's so important to be able to communicate your impact so that people can then appreciate and you can then, you know, progress in life. And why, you know, I keep saying science is important. Well, science gives us the data too. Even though today, you know, we talk about science in general and I talk about all the different grand challenges that are out there, but we can't run away that the biggest challenge yang membelungu every aspect, you know, kehidupan kita, right, is COVID-19. And it's very, very sobering bila kita lihat, you know, hampir, like, not hampir, dah lebih suku billion people dah positive dengan COVID-19. And this doesn't include, all right, pelbagai ramai orang yang belum lagi in, you know, dikesan ataupun takkan dikesan because we know in many countries, the, the ujian uh, uh, peratusan is very, very low. Actually, some people expect this to be even higher you know, uh, dua, tiga kali ganda nombor ini. Dan lebih daripada lima juta orang telah meninggal dunia disebabkan oleh COVID-19. And I think it's really important, you know, for all of us to appreciate, like, it's great that Kerajaan Malaysia, you know, berbanding dengan pelbagai negeri, negara, right? Even lebih modern daripada kita, you know, telah mencapai kadar vaksinasi yang begitu tinggi sekali, uh, dengan you know kada yang agak cepat juga, and you know this is of course good because masyarakat Malaysia also trusted and went out there and actually did it. But I'm sure all of you are asking, bila lah kita nak dapat new normal ni, right? When can we return to normal, right? As you can see, nombor nombor case pun you know walaupun telah menurun. Um, and of course, case dari segi case yang parah, ha, di mana uh, ICU uh, uh, warding ataupun uh, the idea of you know uh, deaths from uh, COVID-19 has dropped significantly. Um, statistik tu masih meningkat ha, setiap hari. And 
I think with extra, you know, sort of uh, precautions and making sure we wear our masks as well as uh, social um, distancing. And as more and more people get vaccinated by, you know, next year, later next year, you know, you'll find that the threat of COVID-19 will be reduced. But, okay, I'm not trying to scare you. The reality is because of the rate of, you know, the world is already so small, you know, in the context of everybody can fly, the communication can be spread so easily, you will realize that pandemic is always going to be just one virus away from our lives. When you actually look at this global graph here, image, you will realize that sebelum COVID-19 datang pun, dah ada pelbagai infectious diseases yang you know, uh, emerging and re-emerging, including benda yang kita ingat kita dah hapuskan lama. But because there are segelintir orang yang berhenti menerima vaksin, all right, dan tanak menerima vaksin against smallpox ataupun measles, you are starting to see you know, this, this, this pathogen, pathogen, eh? ini ialah mikro yang menyebabkan uh, penyakit, dipanggil pathogen, menyebab, you know, sedang uh, kembali uh, semula. And so it is really, really important, you know, that we don't rest on our laurels and we be very aware that there are so many threats out there, including antimicrobial resistant infections. And this is bacterial infections that is caused by the use of uh, antibiotics that is too broad spectrum. And this is thought to be a major issue. But selain daripada infectious diseases, and I know everyone talking about COVID now, penting juga uh, kerana, you know, two years ago, we know that the biggest issue with, um, you know, many countries, including Malaysia, was actually non-communicable diseases. Ini ialah penyakit yang tidak berjangkit. Uh, ini ialah penyakit yang disebabkan oleh lifestyle kita. All right? Dan seven in every ten deaths, you know, worldwide uh, were caused by, you know, these various different choices yang kita, uh, you know, ambil uh, dalam lifestyle kita. Dan maksudnya, kalau ini ialah choices lifestyle, ini bermaksud we can actually avoid it. And this includes penyakit jantung, right, penyakit paru-paru, uh, barah, diabetes, dan juga penyakit kesihatan mental. And you can see you know, in all these different countries, uh, even negara-negara yang, yang, yang maju, uh, it is a significant problem. Gambar raja ini menunjukkan, you know, peratus orang yang obes di Asia Tenggara. And you will see that, you know, uh, even Indonesia, right, walau kita tengok dalam TV, semua slim-slim semua, you see Mulan Jamila and Chris Tayanti and Melly Gloslo or whatever it is. All right. I just realized I put your pop cultural icon somewhere, you know, very, very 20 years old already. So maybe I should have gone and checked what is the latest pop icons, huh? the, 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 the Indonesia. But anyway, you will see that even Indonesia is 21%. I know Malaysia always likes to be number one. And of course, we are number one in this. All right. So, tapat dalam Liga. Kegemukan Asia Tenggara, I mean, kita menang pingat emas. Huh? Uh, bukan pingat emas yang kita nak, tapi you know, the reality is 44.2% uh, uh, rakyat uh, uh, di Malaysia uh, yang, yang adult huh? uh, is actually obese. And this is very serious because obesity dikaitkan dengan pelbagai uh, risiko, termasuk uh, risiko barah. Dan paling, uh, I think, very, very serious ialah child obesity. Because uh, kebanyakan uh, adult yang obese ni, you know, biasanya akan jadi obese, you know, in the 20s, 30s, or 40s. And now we are starting to see the child uh, obesity. So ini ialah budak antara 5 hingga 19 tahun. You can see that, you know, negara-negara Vietnam, Cambodia, you know, it's increasing. And it's true. I mean, I, I've been invited to Thailand quite a number of times. And you can see, they was, uh, you know, masih kurus. But when I saw the school kids, a lot of them are, you know, chubby. So ini bukan overweight, nah. ini ialah obese, you know. So it's it's serious. I mean, jika kita gunakan uh, kriteria untuk overweight, akan, you know, lebih-lebih tinggi. 
dan ini Malaysia hanya uh, menang Tiara, okay? Tapi ini Brunei uh, is is the highest. So it's it's really you know I I joke about tingat tingat, but actually it's 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 a statistic yang memang kurang manis, you know, statistic yang betul betul you know kita perlu uh, you know be very serious about it. Which is why you know I actually am very happy with uh, the recent agenda nasional Malaysia sehat uh, yang telah di uh, launch oleh uh, perdana menteri dan juga menteri kesihatan um, that you know walaupun kita boleh mengharapkan peningkatan dari segi number of katil di hospital dan juga ubat-ubat yang murah. Tapi sebenarnya prevention is always the best way of doing this. And bagaimana kita boleh memupuk satu budaya kehidupan yang sehat supaya bukan saja persekitaran kita lestari, tetapi juga memastikan cara hidup kita akan menyokong, you know, quality hidup. So tak guna, you know, kita hidup lebih lama di dunia ini jika you know uh, whatever extra masa yang kita hidup, you know, keren terlantar di hospital. Right, so it's it's really really important we we think about this agenda national Malaysia sehat and all of us have to make an effort. All right, and I even I am very committed to that now. Then I use the word tadi persekitaran yang sehat kerana kita lebih lebih uh, aware that uh, sekarang um, hanya 20 peratus, all right, uh, faktor faktor yang akan menjamin kesehatan kita adalah terletak di dalam hospital ataupun klinik-klinik ataupun ubat-ubat yang kita ambil. Sains telah menunjukkan lebih kurang 80% faktor yang akan menentukan tahap kesihatan kita bergantung kepada persekitaran kita termaksud kualiti uh, udara, kualiti air dan juga bagaimana kita boleh menyokong biodiversity Right, ini ialah diversity pelbagai species yang berada dan Malaysia, you know, yang terletak di tropics adalah, you know, really this is the, you know, really the the most in highest levels of concentration, alright, yang paling padat dengan biodiversity. Dan kenapa biodiversity ini sangat penting? It's very obvious because bukan saja there are many many different herbs or different different traditional um, you know sort of potential solutions to treatment but we also know that covid-19 would not be here if it wasn't for the existence of viruses that can jump from one species to another species and this happened in the nipah virus where the kelawar to the pigs and in the pig farms, the pigs interacted with the humans. And because the viruses can mutate, then they mutate and then they jump into another part. Because viruses are not live cells. Viruses don't have one organelle that I talked about just now. What is the organelle yang I telah tunjuk tadi? Yang telah di, 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 di crystallographkan oleh Ada Yonat. What's the name of that? Or Organelle? What's the name of the organelle? Organelle yang mem it's our kilang membuat protein dalam sel. Ribosome. Very good. So protein, so viruses, they are the bahan bakar, but viruses don't have ribosomes. So basically, the viruses will go into our cells and menggunakan ribosome kita untuk membuat semua protein-protein virus. Dan lepas tu dia akan assembly and jadi virus, bayi virus yang baru. And then that's how the virus bercambang. Dia menggunakan ribosome kita sendiri. Dan semasa proses dia menduplikasikan bahan bakar virus dan juga membentuk protein yang baru, di situlah kadangkala mutasi berlaku. And that is how type A virus menjadi type B and then type C and of course dalam dunia yang sekarang lebih-lebih dekat dengan semua orang because everyone can travel between one place to another so that's how before this mungkin the disease will only be in one place but sekarang the disease gets spread everywhere around the world and that's where you have a pandemic and not just an epidemic 
So this is really important, right? The hutan, you know, and all these different, basically, kawasan persekitaran, sangat-sangat penting untuk kita maintain. Because if we don't actually maintain the sempadan-sempadan untuk memastikan species-species yang sepatutnya tak bertemu, tak bertemu, right? Sangat-sangat penting. Because if we allow this, then you're going to have higher chances. There are thousands of other viruses yang kita tak tahu pun lagi. And jika virus-virus ini, you know, unfortunately, ter-spill over, all right? Tertumpah, that's the, the word actually, you know, that they can move from animals to humans. That's what we call as zoonotic. It's going to be a serious issue. And that is why biodiversity is becoming more and more important. So that's why when we talk about normal, normal, new normal, I always say, let's talk about moving from pre to post, right? Pandemic. But the coronavirus will still coexist and we have to learn how to do this. And we are learning so much, right? Sebelum ni tak ada orang pun tahu tentang SARS-CoV-2. Tetapi kerana, you know, science, we got to know what it is. Then we were able to identify, ah, SARS-CoV-2 ni lah yang akan menyebabkan COVID-19. Ah, dia punya antigen, ACE2 tu yang kita boleh gunakan untuk menghasilkan vaksin supaya immune system kita akan, you know, ter teruja dan terangsang dan akan mengeluarkan pelbagai antibody untuk uh, menyah aktifkan uh, virus tersebut. Dan selepas itu kita pun kenal pasti lama ada orang ada vaksin pun tak nak. Bagaimana kita nak belajar mengenai psikologi orang-orang ini untuk mengenal pasti cara terbaik untuk kita uh, meningkatkan kadar vaksinasi. So you are realizing that today, right, that there are so many things that kita tak tahu pun kita tak tahu dan kita tak tahu. How do you know things yang you tak tahu, you tak tahu, you tak tahu pun? Right? And that's the beauty of science. Because science bukan sahaja memberitahu kita jawapan right, untuk benda yang kita tak tahu, tapi juga men men menyedarkan kita bahawa ada benda yang kita tak tahu dan justru itu perlukan penyelidikan supaya kita dapat mengenal pasti apa lagi yang kita tak tahu dan kita mengetahui apa yang tak tahu itu. Alright? I talk about tahu-tahu sekarang, aku nak makan tahu fa. And how do we actually achieve that? It's by using technology, all right? And technologies will change our future. And that's what research does because ultimately, science ialah knowledge. Dan bila kita mengaplikasikan science tersebut untuk menjadikan satu solusi bagi problem yang telah dikenal pasti, that is what technology is. And of course, biotech, biomedicine has been the hero, right? Tanpa kita mengenal pasti the virus, and men, you know, mencipta pelbagai vaksin, diagnosis, dan juga terapi against SARS-CoV-2, we would not have been able to identify. And so, of course, it's great that we have multiple different types of vaccines. And how do we achieve this? Bagaimana scientists sekarang eh, boleh dengan cepat mengenal pasti? And that is why some of the problems, because, eh, hey, betul ke ni vaksin? Kenapa cepat sangat ah vaksin boleh sebelum ni vaksin 20 tahun baru dah boleh dihasilkan. Sekarang satu tahun pun boleh dihasilkan. Ni mesti pakar industri telah menghasilkan virus ni lepas tu hasilkan vaksin you know untuk mendapat duit. But actually it's not true. Hari ini because kita ada teknologi ini, genomics. Genomics ialah satu teknik yang membolehkan kita untuk you know, mengenal pasti jujukan DNA, susunan bagaimana maklumat bahan bakar okay, disusun dan teratur. Because maklumat bahan bakar itulah yang akan memberitahu ribosom bagaimana kita nak hasilkan protein tersebut. Dia macam Lego, right? Uh, tapi instruction untuk kita, uh, so and the ribosome is actually macam budak sedang you know uh, baca instruction dan, dan mencantum uh, all the different uh, uh, Lego pieces. And so today we have a technique uh, yang kita boleh just screen through all the genomics data. And we have a world leader, you know, a Malaysian world leader called Professor Nick Serena, Nick Zainal, the Cambridge University, yang, you know, is a pakar genomics. And she can actually look at the whole genome and actually identify apa jenis uh, uh, pesakit uh, yang, yang akan, you know, benefit from different types of therapy. So the genomics technology 
ialah teknologi yang akan membolehkan kita untuk belajar dengan begitu cepat sekali okay, bagaimana virus sedang mutate, apakah jenis uh, protein yang kita boleh target untuk vaksin and it's actually really spread the far, you know, but there are so many things that we don't know and over time we will also start learning apakah jenis jujukan DNA yang akan memberikan kesan yang lebih memudaratkan ataupun kesan yang lebih baik ataupun apakah rawatan yang lebih sesuai dengan diri kita right contohnya with cancer patients you have some cancer patients you know after the therapy they survive but some cancer patients unfortunately don't survive because sekarang how you treat patients you treat the patients all about the same macam Panadol kan, you baca oh ingredient Panadol, tak kisahlah you know, uh, your size, tak kisah whatever, as long as your umur berapa ni you ambil dua biji Panadol you know, ber berapa jam but over time, by understanding the DNA, we will understand that some people have different ways of metabolizing the Panadol some akan mengumuhkan Panadol dengan cepat, some won't you know, mengumuhkan so Panadol will be in your body for a long period of time, and so how can we actually moderate that And what we are also in, interested, and that's the work that, you know, at some way, we are also becoming more and more interested. This is called microbiome. So what we realize is, okay, who wants to guess? Berapa cells ada dalam tubuh badan manusia? Dewasa. Lebih kurang. Who wants to guess? Who wants to guess? Dah ada jawapan tu dekat screen tu. 100 trillion. Oh, you saw already. Alamak. Okay. <laughs> okay, it's good. Okay. So, yeah. Dapat cool. voucher lah. Dapat voucher. No, no. But, but that's the, the number of bacteria. Yeah. But the number of cells, human cells is about 30, 38 trillion. All right. Um, in, in in one human. You can see, ada lebih kurang 2 hingga 3 kali ganda microbes yang hidup dengan kita in our skin, in our usus, in all the different organs. And we are really realizing that these microbes, they are good and they are the ones that are bad. And, and, and they are also depending on when they are good and when they are bad. Just like you lah, depending on siapa kawan, right? Ada kawan yang akan menjadikan you baik. Ada kawan bila you, you know, when they are with, with your friends, then you jadi hantu, right? So it is the same thing with bacteria. In, in your usus, it depends on kepelbagaian, alright, bila ada, ada bakteria pengawas di sana, semua baik-baik sekali. As soon as waktu rehat, then you know, pengawas leaves, then of course, you know, they will show their real, their real cell. And we are realizing that apa yang kita makan, dan juga kandungan bakteria dalam usus kita, juga akan mengakibatkan bagaimana fungsi otak kita. Um, you know, dan it's really, really important you know, to appreciate that There's so much of science in, in how we can actually improve human health through what is called the brain-gut axis. And then, of course, you know, now we have printing, right? 3D printing. But now we also have 3D organ printing. So instead of the, you know, putting in polymer ataupun plastic, now what they do is they create a scaffold. And you see this injection here. It's actually injecting cells into the scaffold so that you can grow your telinga, you can grow your pancreas, you can grow all kinds of different stuff. And why is 3D organ printing so exciting? Because the cells yang kita gunakan is the cell, cell diri sendiri. Masalah utama dalam pemindahan organ biasanya ialah kerana badan kita reject organ uh, donor kita. But now if you can print organ kita, right, then you know, this is a, a great solution. A big thing, of course, with COVID-19 has been digital health, right? And bagaimana komunikasi, uh, you know, boleh di, di, di improve that you tak perlu datang ke hospital. Kita boleh monitor your health and actually do a lot of testing. And that's why at Sunway, we even had our medical center. We now have a telemedicine command center. And this command center is actually done for free to provide patients with advice on what can be done. And when we think about this is the Sunway city, how we can actually connect everybody, right? To, to, to really basically dapat apa-apa kemudahan yang diperlukan. And 
The reason why this is happening so quickly is because you probably have heard of Industry 4.0. Bagaimana, you know, all these machines are replacing all the different functions that are actually out there. In fact, in the future, they say that this is a Time magazine, right? That the sempadan antara human and robot, machine and our brain is all going to be interconnected. It's not like Matrix where you're going to be connected to a, a, a machine or whatever it is. But how we make decisions, how we actually decide on things is going to be a combination of that. And these robots are going to be actually in ours too. For example, you have probably heard of nano medicine. Huh? And in Malaysia, we have nano Malaysia that is actually advancing research in this of how we can use these tiny robots, right? To go into our cells, to target specifically. And this is one way, for example, in cancer research, we're finding that untuk mengatasi rintangan, you know, of the different type of rawatan is not about trying to increase the different drugs, but it's how can we deliver that drugs more effectively. And then we talk about AI integration of how we can enhance our ability to decide and detect. Think about all the data that we are getting from my Sujatra, right? How so quickly we can decide close contact, you know, direct contact, and actually do all the surveillance so that we can actually prevent. And in the future, we hope we can do that, you know, for all the different compositions that we have. And, and then make decisions to personalize our healthcare and what have you. And this includes having implants in ours, but not so good. Lah. For me, I have a smartwatch, but I only use my smartwatch to actually, you know, read the time. Uh, sometimes, you know, it's also equally important untuk kita menggunakan kemudahan kemudahan ini untuk uh, change our behavior. And this includes VR health tech. Bagaimana surgeons di Amerika Syarikat boleh menjalankan surgery di Malaysia tanpa perlu datang ke Malaysia. And that is because the machines are connected and the machines does the, the, the operation according to the handling of the surgeon in another country. Isn't that so cool? Amazing, right? And of course, the one that I think many people will be concerned, but also hopeful is two years ago, two very amazingly brilliant scientists, Jennifer Dudna and Emmanuel Chapentier, identified a technique called CRISPR untuk mengedit DNA. Sebelum ni kita hanya boleh correct dan rawat dan sebagainya. Sekarang, you know, there is also the ability untuk menukar, uh, you know, bahan bakar yang mungkin diidentify sebagai uh, disease causing. But of course, there's a big masalah whether this is ethical or not. And this is something that, you know, we are still trying to understand. And also very important to understand that not everything is also located in the DNA. There are also bagaimana cara hidup kita, cara hidup ibu bapa kita. Contohnya, I always blame my mother. She must have eaten some, you know, rubbish while she was pregnant. That is why I'm obese, you know. Um, but of course, you know, it, there are many different aspects to all of this. Um, and, and, you know, we have to take charge of our own self. But one of the big, you know, areas that we still don't know is, of course, the brain. This is one area, you know, I, I always ask myself, I know chocolates are not good, but why I still need to eat chocolate, right? Um, and, and that's because, you know, the way our brain reacts with all kinds of parts of body, we still don't understand the psychology of it. And I think with COVID-19, we have understood that, you know, so easily our mental health can degenerate without the connections that we actually have. And so that is why, now, we don't talk about biology just with biology. We talk about biology with psychology. How can we actually think about when we treat a patient, we don't just treat a patient based on bahan bakar or you know, biomarker yang kita boleh lihat dalam darah, but also think about the psychology of the individual. Understand the psychology of the families too, right? So that basically together, we can actually support that individual. And this is why we need to really think about dengan otomasi yang sedang berlaku, you know, how can we actually balance between innovation as well as make sure there's equity in our population. So my last few, you know, section that I want to talk about is why science? You know, I, I shared with you, you know, the journey of a scientist and the impact of a scientist. I dah share with you pelbagai jenis science yang sedang menginovasi and akan shape the future of medicine. 
But what about your future, right? And, and, and I think it's something for you to think about. This is the World Economic Forum. Huh? They, they, they obviously, setiap tahun akan keluarkan what are the new jobs you know, with the global challenges and stuff. And just look at here, what is the job that is most emerging? It's data analysis and scientists. So whenever you hear, Ala, no job, la, scientists. No, there is always job for scientists, but the scientist must be a scientist that finds solution. La. Scientists yang hanya sekada dapat ijazah science, that is not a scientist. That is just graduate science. Scientists are people who actually actively find the solutions by doing the research, or they memasyarakatkan science, or they do actually something that's actually relevant. And you can see, scientists, you know, are sincerely the biggest, right? And you can see even down you go, new technology specialists, information technology services, all kinds of stuff. And when you think about healthcare, like I mentioned to you, it's not just about being a doctor, being a nurse, but it's about being a researcher, innovator, entrepreneur, social advocate and influencers that's going to influence the health of our life. So, Adere, you know, sometimes I always say, oh, I nak berdikari, okay? But, you know, the one important thing about, you know, uh, for me is not only berdikari, but it's also learning how to depend on your own self. And that dependence on own self, I think, needs to also be taken into account that is the education. Don't just put nilai education on the ijazah yang you dapat. But think about bagaimana you are the skill to learn, unlearn, and relearn. Because education is changing. I can tell you that, you know, it's been now more than 10 years since I graduated from Cambridge. Dan pelbagai bahan yang I belajar masa kat Cambridge, sekarang I perlu, you know, nyah belajar and actually learn new things because our knowledge is always improving and changing. I know many of you, you know, have been stuck with online. I'm glad that basically we, most of you will be having face-to-face -face very soon. I'm so happy that the schools are open because the human interaction is very important. But the reality is, the one thing is that it's actually your choice. It doesn't matter whether it's online or face-to-face, -face, the knowledge is everywhere. And you have to be committed towards learning how to critical think, to be creative, to actually collaborate. And data, the ability, you have to be comfortable with data. You have to learn how to communicate. When I think about my job today, where I advise the government, you know, I advise policymakers, but also we know about this alternative facts or benda benda yang you know wrong that's not actually um, you know shared that's shared crazily in social media right all this this fake news and so i find myself frequently being on the media trying to actually talk about all the different issues that we actually have so that we can advise and be involved and i'm only doing that because i have science background and i'm able to communicate that science right and it's really important that you also appreciate that science is not an individual endeavor. It's a team approach. We can't achieve science and the solutions by being alone. We can only do that by, by working with different groups of people, interdisciplinary research, to find the novel solutions that we are out there. And this could be from finding new ways to, 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 to look at food security, to actually look at new IT solutions. It doesn't matter. Ultimately, it's about finding the solutions that matter. For me, it's about, of course, the diseases, whether infectious diseases or non-communicable diseases. And of course, now I'm also pushing this idea of planetary health, ecology and conservation. And whenever you think about research, why I'm always excited is because you get to think, you get to discover, you get to look at the data and analyze, you write. So, you know, you can see, basically, most scientists, you are able to Google them and you can see their impact. Ultimately, you know, Anna Asmur, the beauty about science is that you don't only have a successful career for yourself, your efforts can actually impact beribu ribu, or if not berjuta juta orang di luar sana, if your solution is actually relevant. That is why we talk about excellence, but it's excellence with a heart. Integrity is also a very important thing. We need a lot of very clever people but we also need a lot of clever people who do the right thing, even when no one is watching. And I want all of you to realize that science can only achieve this if we have the integrity and the honesty and the ethics for this. So now all of you who are in school or university, 
think about all the resources that are actually out there and realize that all of us will fail. That is why it's called research. If you search satu kali and dapat, it's called search lah, or Google search. But research is re 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 research because you are actually identifying a new thing that has never been found. So think about education as a wholesome education, an education that you can actually achieve, right? By just not about a sigil, but looking at it in totality. It's not about graduating, but it's about having the empathy to see with the eyes of another, listen with the ears of another, and feel with the heart of another. Because the world needs all the champion out there to use science, not to serve scientists, but to use science to serve humanity by addressing all the inequalities that are out there. That's my sharing for today. If we can all work together to try and fight the inequalities, then together, we can shape a world that is more equal. Thank you. I noticed that there's actually a question. Maybe I should answer that question. So um, Ms. Elena has a question. Dr. Abi, what do you think about research that cannot be commercialized? Not because it's not good, but no funding. Is it worth? Yeah, so I think uh, it, that's a great question, uh, Elena. Um, for me, uh, there are two parts here, right? There are benda-benda yang kita boleh kawal and benda yang tak boleh dikawal. Um, first of all, I always ask, right? Kenapa that project tak boleh defund? Adakah tak boleh defund because orang tak, tak tahu that it's actually important? And maybe that's why the scientists has to communicate it better so that they can understand it's important and should be funded. Ataupun, it is not being funded because memang tak relevant. Memang tak ada orang pun nak. You know, so that is why we actually encourage researchers today to actually don't wait until you dah dapat solution, baru yang nak tanya siapa nak beli saya punya solution. But at the start of finding the solution, you work with the stakeholders. Macam saya, tak guna untuk saya cari rawatan kanser untuk kanser-kanser yang boleh dirawat dah. Right? So it's important for me to work with the clinicians to identify what are the different cancers yang memang sekarang tak ada rawatan yang 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 baik. Sama juga dengan you know apa-apa jenis soalan yang kita nak jawab. Kalau soalan tu dah terjawab, sila gunakan you know segala usaha dan resources yang ada untuk menjawab soalan yang belum dijawab. Dan juga soalan di mana orang lain memerlukan jawapan. Kalau soalan tersebut hanya untuk you shock sendiri, then you know jangan complain lah kenapa tak ada uh, funding. But it's true. To a certain extent, one of the things that we also need to ask ourselves, how can we improve the local demand? And that includes, lah, this is going to sound very controversial. It is true. Maybe some of our foreign cars are cheaper than our local cars. But maybe our governments should ask ourselves, what is our purpose? Is our purpose to really help to enhance our local economy and the local, you know, and what are the benefits of this? And if it is, then maybe we should be Belilah barangan buatan Malaysia. And actually through that, we can actually create our local demand. And then from that local demand, kita boleh you know, meningkatkan you know, uh, keperluan dan pasaran di luar negara. So I think, um, you know, Alina, it's, it's two parts. Lah. I think from a scientist perspective, kita kena pastikan soalan yang kita nak jawab tu memang soalan yang in demand right, oleh orang lain dan bukan soalan kita saja. Then, of course, on the other side, the supply, right, needs to connect with the demand by basically making sure that the the biggest, you know, users, the industry tempatan, should actually embrace our local products and local innovations. But from my experience, is that if you have a good innovation, companies and industry may not pun. That's a great question, Elena. What about any any students? You've got any questions? I wish I could actually see you in person, you know, because uh, we could have done some activities together and you know really engage with all of you. Uh, but maybe next year, you know, we 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 might meet each other. But um, if you ever need to uh, connect with me, I will share with you my email here. 
jangan teragak-agak untuk tanya apa-apa soalan, alright? And uh, you know, I'm always excited. I mean, you know, uh, mungkin you know bunyinya klise that you know anaklah you know mas you know basically akan penentu masa depan kita, but it's a fact. You know, and untuk saya bukan saja masa depan, tapi masa sekarang juga kita perlukan input uh, daripada um, anak-anak kita because you guys have the best ideas. You have got the energy. I mean, my son is always asking me questions. I pun tak tahu jawab. I terpaksa Google untuk cari jawapan. And so it's it's really really important that um, you know we keep this communication. Right. I I think it's already 10:34. Um, you know, moderator, I, I can stay on a little longer, but if you have uh, something else, I know you have got so many exciting events uh, at the Pusat Science uh, Negara. So I just want to say thank you very much, Pusat Science Negara, for inviting me. It has been a pleasure. And um, hashtag kita jaga kita, syukur selalu. And marilah kita bersama-sama memasyarakatkan sains dan juga amalkan gaya hidup yang sehat. Thank you. Okay, terima kasih, Prof. Okay, kita uh, di penghujung sesi slot ini, terima kasih kepada Prof di atas perkongsian yang sungguh padat eh, dengan informasi yang kita boleh manfaatkan semoga perkongsian tersebut tuan-tuan, uh, puan-puan, adik-adik yang oh, okay. yang telah saksikan sesi slot tadi dapat kita manfaat eh, uh, maklumat, pengetahuan, info, ilmu serta semangat perkongsian yang disampaikan oleh Prof Abi tu kita dapat jadikan sebagai batu loncatan kita untuk menjadi seorang yang terbaik serta dapat menyumbang kepada masyarakat negara dalam bidang sains. Okay, terima kasih banyak-banyak Prof. Okay. Ah, terima kasih. Yeah. Okay, seterusnya tuan-tuan, puan-puan, adik-adik pada jam 10.30 ini eh, kita sedang uh, ada aktiviti Science Fast iaitu pertandingan kuis secara online di platform Facebook Live Pusat Sains Negara. Okay, ada banyak hadiah menarik oh, untuk sorry. anda kepada yang menang. Okay, jangan lupa join eh, pertandingan secara online tu. Okay. Dan seterusnya kita pukul 10.40 kita ada uh, sesi 360 Science Tour Herb Garden Grow Your Own Remedies uh, Ini bagaimana kita nak tengok tambah-tambah herba uh, Kita boleh tengok uh, nanti di uh, platform virtual PSN Science Fest pada jam 10.40 nanti okay, oh, Jangan lupa saksikan dan jumpa anda di sesi oh, seterusnya Terima kasih Kak Aisyah Okay, mohon adik-adik semua untuk sis, uh, isi uh, borang maklum balas. Uh, saya ada share dekat link bawah. Eh. Atau uh, ada. Mohon semua pelajar untuk isi borang maklum balas. Eh, seperti link pautan yang kita telah berikan. Okay. okay, thank you Prof. Alright, thank you.